the trouble is here. It's me. How fair you below. Understood. I will inform Vritra. Chaos and panic sweep Raz at Han, and many more have succumbed to the transformations. Amidst the fray, Ahawan fell, protecting a grief-stricken father. <sighs> My friends fight alongside your radiant host to secure the capital. Beasts have been sighted in Palakas stand as well. We have divided our forces in hopes of quelling the threat there. Of small solace is that we now know what triggers the transformation, as my companions tell it. So it is the very fear and despair in their hearts which inflict this abhorrent punishment upon them. A nightmare for which my children will never awake. O oh, capricious and cruel fate, they are undeserving of such condemnation. Will you wallow in sorrow or rise to the occasion? Razat Han is leaderless. Before he passed, Ahawan sought to reveal the truth to his people. Honor his wishes. To what end? To breed a new conflict between dragon and man? These claws could reduce thee to shreds with a touch. These jaws crush thy bones to dust. Only through my proxy could I walk with my children. Without him, I am a bringer of fear. No different from the beasts which beleaguer them. Perhaps so. Only in death were Hreisvelger and Shiva united. Indeed, whenever man and dragon have come together, death has ever been the inevitable result. It was our fear of your kind that sparked a nigh-endless war. Fear and hate of which Nidhogg drank deep as he laid waste to my homeland. And in turn, I took my revenge on his brood. Blood for blood, pain for pain. I thought nothing of theirs, only of mine. And yet, were the chasm between us too vast and too deep, Kreisvelga would not have borne his sail to battle and our rescue. He would never have entrusted a mortal champion with one of his eyes, and the Dragon Song War would still rage on. And I would still wage a never-ending war of violence and vengeance. The future of our star be damned. I cannot speak for Ahuan's greater goals, yet I know that he served you, served your people, long and true. In this time of unprecedented crisis, he turned to you. You could do worse than to place your trust in him. It will not be easy, but the future of Radzid Han hangs in the balance. We have company. It's all or nothing!
courage, friend. The pain will pass. Has anyone seen Mevan? Where could she be? We've dealt with all the blasphemies and made certain no villagers are still in hiding. Good work. We've otherwise tended to the wounded as best we can. What will become of us? Help is on the way, surely. We may have to abandon our homes now, but we will return, someday. But where can we go? Is anywhere even safe? That I cannot say. Well, I can. Nowhere's safe. Run all you like, but there's no escape in these things. And even if I could... <laughs> it's too late for my family. <laughs> This isn't good. The more they dwell on the tragedy, the more likely we are to lose them, too. My friends, this... This is a place of worship. Should your heart quake with sadness, cast your mind to the heavens and remember Remember the teachings of the old gods. Did they not implore us to stand fast when waves of sorrow break against our shores? Know this, my children. There is more ugliness than beauty in this world. To live is to suffer, to drink of calamity and drown in anguish, to toil and be tested, always and ever. Tis a perilous path you walk. Death lurks in the dark and is the sole promise that awaits at journey's end. You will tremble with terror. You will weep tears of anger and despair. But do not avert your eyes. See your life for what it is. Then will you see how the hardships make you strong. reforged as scales for your armor. Every agony to temper your blade. Thank you, lad. We'd almost forgotten who we are. My undying gratitude to you as well, my friends. You were searching for Mevan, no? We must return home. I pray you help the boy find his friend. Gladly. We dispatched what beasts we could, but the roads are still dangerous. Stay together and go in safety. That was very impressive, what you did back there. Those words seem to resonate with your people. 
should. They were the first spoken unto our ancestors by the divinity of legend. I'm easily upset, and fish are wont to flee a temperamental land, so I recite the teachings over and over to calm myself. They're lovely and inspiring to hear, though I imagine they were born of great misfortune. They are born of life. There's as much bad as good in it. More, many would attest. All the more reason to appreciate the good when you can. I won't argue with that. In darkness, seek joy. Surrender not to sadness and see beyond despair. Walk free, and bear the light for others to follow. And with that, let us see if we can't find Mervyn. Did you see? That beast was chasing someone. is alert and I see no wounds and yet she grows weaker. My spells can do no more. What she needs is a change of clothes and a warm bed. We must hurry back. Not now. Matsya, take the child. Appears we've made enough noise to be heard for miles around. More will be upon us ere long. We make our stand here. Matya, can you take her back to the village? But the child? All, all by myself? You can't be serious! The beasts will follow you home unless we stop them here. And so we shall. Be strong, Matsya. Her life is in your hands. Right. I... I can do it. I know you can. We'll keep them busy, Matsya. Go! Quickly!
No. No. Not you too. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. To live is to suffer. To drink of calamity. It is a perilous path. Death lurks in the dark. No! I'm not afraid! I'm not afraid! You're not afraid! Your eyes see! See your life for what it is! See how the hardships make you strong! Every doubt reforged! Please, you must save the child. She is all that remains of Mevan and Grasaf. Please. Well, well. Seems the babe's taken a liking to you. friends as we flew in. They appeared to be holding their own against the Horde. Right. That's the last of them. We should hurry and find Matsya. Can you be so sure? A fine battle it must have been. Shame I missed it. Astinian, it was you who came to Matia's aid. I was only along for the ride. Vritra was the one who saw the boy was in need. The two are headed back to the village. Where the worm will honor Ahiwan's wishes and finally reveal himself to his people. So, will you go and join them? There's something I need to do first. Mervyn gave her life so that her child might live. She deserves better than to be left to drift alone. She deserves to be laid to rest beside her husband, at least. Will you help me?
Look, someone's coming. People of Razathan, it warms my heart to see so many brave, resilient souls before me. Today, I would share with you a great revelation. But before I do, I must make a humble request. Do not be alarmed, nor avert your eyes. See the one I unveil for who he is, and know that he means you no harm. Very well. I dare say it can't be worse than the horrors we've already seen. Many thanks. If I am hearing this right, you were the satrap all along? Vashon! I mean... Master Vitra... The, the, does your divine eye really see all? I pray you let 
me watch over it, over you. I do not know you, dragon, but I thank you for speaking the truth to us. As divinities, both Manusha and Riga once joined together, so too do I believe that hand in hand, we can overcome this ordeal and welcome an era of peace. sight that would have surely brought a smile to his ale's face. Indeed. Excuse me, but I must speak with the Sartrap at once. Father! You have suffered dearly of late, yet you must endeavor to look beyond these losses to the future you yet have. On behalf of the Forum of Charlian, I come with a proposal by which you, the people of Radzat Han, might be saved. I say again, I must speak with your satrap. I beseech you, take me to him with all possible haste. I am Satrap here. Speak thy proposal. All present shall hear and judge. If I have given offense, then I apologize. First, Allow me to share with you what knowledge we have of the phenomenon responsible for your woes. The final days. It is an affliction of stagnancy and rot, sown into the currents of the star. Though the first prominent manifestation was here, in Thavnir, it will invariably spread to every corner of the world. The Forum was forewarned of this apocalypse several centuries ago. Thenceforth, my predecessors sought to prepare for the end times in the only conceivable fashion, by securing a means of escape. Escape this star? What madness is this? Tis by no means madness. With the coming of the seventh umbral calamity, the true nature of the Red Moon, Dalamud, was revealed. That it was an artificial construct of ancient Alag. But what of the Silver Moon? This celestial satellite is yet another technological marvel fashioned and maintained by ancient allies. A ship that will sail the heavens and deliver our people from destruction. And by our people, I speak not only of Charlian. We mean to save every man, woman, and child it is within our power to save. Including you, our dear friends of Radzat Han. Recent events necessitate adjustments be made, and quickly, but we can and will escort you safely to the moon. Long has thy forum been allies to Thavnir. I trust thou dost not extend this offer lightly. Yet I wonder, is this truly the way? Is there a future to be built for us beyond this star? Our father deemed the last bastion of hope. 
It is for that very reason I come before you and your people. To answer any and all of your questions. To offer my assurances and allay your fears. Though, if you wish the best for your people, I advise you to render your decision swiftly. You're still here. What a relief. Nidana, what's the matter? Has something happened at Palika Stand? Oh, no, not that I know of. I just hope to hear your thoughts on a theory of mine. All who undergo the transformation are drained of their ether, yes? What is it then that gives these beasts the strength to carry on as they do? Logically, they must be drawing upon an alternate form of vital energy. That put me in mind of our earlier conversation, when I tried to explain the essence which many confuse with ether. Akasha, yes, I remember. The unseen gift bestowed from on high. An energy influenced solely by emotion. Yes, yes. In this instance, negative ones set Akasha into motion, thereby infusing the beasts with vitality. I posit this as the mechanism by which the beasts are born and sustained. Ah, do you still have that flower? If we accept that it once shone bright by drawing upon Akasha, influenced by the thoughts of those nearby, then fear, terror, despair, negative emotions so powerful as to suffocate it, permeated the air in this place. You must be very careful. The forces which drive the final days may be beyond our ability to perceive. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you like that. At any rate, I will continue my research into Akasha. Do temper your expectations, however. There are sadly few detailed studies upon which I may draw. Formulating a new theory as you have is itself no small feat. I wish you well in your endeavors and pray you take care. Thank you. You stay safe as well, yes? Till next we meet, and we will meet again.
So blasphemies now plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true, as it did in Amarot. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Even the flower she gave us is no more. advise the Watcher. But what could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Elidibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Nothing else. Should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure. Should we come to it. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. 
I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, if only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to Harrius time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes, so much left for you to see. Where beginning ends, and end begins. <laughs>